So enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Eric Wilson. I'm from Coast Community College District, which is in Coast Mesa. We are the district that holds Golden West College, Coastline, and Orange Coast College. I'm just, I am the IT facilitator, my new title. Um, but basically, I've been there for 14 years teaching and training faculty and staff how to use technology. And I specialize in online learning and teaching and, of course, Blackboard. I've done Blackboard, WebCT, I've done Moodle, Dino in the Canvas because the district is in the Canvas. It's, it's a whole shebang. So anyway, this is what my old title for this class because I did this at Mount uh, Jacinto College when I did the flex days. So I'm just going to start from this point. So basically, we're going to talk about how to make your content in Blackboard better. Because how many of you guys attach files in your in your classes? You upload the PDF. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't bring my clickers. I usually use clickers, but I need everybody's hand to go up. So that's a waste of my time. So we're going to stop attaching. I'm going to show you how to stop attaching because you don't need to do it in everything. You can do it in certain things, but you can make it better. You can make it more personal. So many of us are attaching our content, including the syllabus in PDF in our Blackboard shells. Now, that's an exception. You can have, the P you should have it there so the students can download it and keep it with them. They can't argue with you, who did it good? Oh, yes, you did. Okay. So, but you can have a syllabus online and a PDF version. Okay. The more the students have to click, think about this. We've already been talking about the last two days. The more the students have to click, download, print, or copy to their tablets, the more they're going to go disengage them. They don't want to do it. Every time they have to go into units, and they have to download all these different files to do this stuff. This is an online class. And then they have to put it on their tablets, and they have to read it, and then they print it. They're going to go, this is boring. I should just go on and just read. And you can do that. You can make it happen. We can help our students to make it easy and make it for us. <coughs> so you're going to be your own author, OK? You're going to be your own author. Blackboard has a new, actually it's not even new, it's been around for a while, but it's an improved, awesome uh, content editor. And we have Service Pack 14. How many of you have Service Pack 14? 13? How many of you don't know? Let me show you how you can find out what Service Pack you want. Okay, I will talk to you about that. But you should know what Service Pack you're on because how you get trained depends on that. Especially now that there's going to be two more service packs from Blackboard before Blackboard changes their name in January. I'm not going to say anything more than that. But it's going to be good. So think of the editor as a little online Microsoft Word or a Dreamweaver. Who uses Dreamweaver? Can we use Dreamweaver? A little bit? Okay. It, basically, you're taking your stuff, you put it on there, and Dreamweaver's content editor makes it into web pages. It does all the HTML stuff for you. I'm going to show you how to, how to do that, how you can make it look purdy. Okay, that word purdy is stuck in my head because my 15-year-old son used to walk to Oklahoma all this when he was a baby. And I had that purdy is stuck in my head. So you can make your content your way for online lockdown and beautiful delivery, which means they're locked down. It's, it's a web page so the students can't modify it. They can print it, but they can't modify it. And that makes it easy. It also adds images videos and links into, you can embed them into the content area as well. <clears throat> They've become nice professional pages and they look really nice and sharp. Students love reading your content and they're getting more and more technology savvy even though they may have to be learned how to use it, but they're getting more technology savvy. Especially with the iPad, the tablets, they can read your stuff, including if they're using Blackboard Mobile. How many use Blackboard Mobile in your school? Okay. So this is going to be nice to on that. And it is painless, totally painless. So I'm going to switch to my live Blackboard. I'm going to start showing how you can do it. I'm also going to show you how to um, copy from Word to the system and how to make it through other modes and that kind of stuff. I'm going to bring in a picture. I'm so scared to close that microphone. Stay. Okay. By the way, this is how you use Prezi. Yeah. I think it's something you got. 
I, sh I was, I was going to propose a present workshop for this thing. I totally forgot about it. And, of course, Blaine kicked me in the butt. <laughs> Did you fool? Okay. <clears throat> Here I am in Blackboard. Right? We all know that stuff. But by the way, let me back out just a little bit. Let me show you how you can find out your service pack. Your service pack, you're going to go down to the bottom on the logon page. And you're going to see installation details. You click on that. You very happy to read. And you'll see 9.1. See that first two numbers? That's your service pack number. Okay? So if you, uh, let's say 13 for 13. 12 for 12. 12 is not, actually, Guru is not 12. There's 11. Okay? There is no 12. Um, so that's how you can tell what service pack you're on. So, so you know. <coughs> and I got a lot back in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we have to do to make any content is you gotta have what? Have to have a content area. Okay, you gotta have a content area. Okay. So what I'm gonna I'm just gonna start making a, a new one here. So I'm gonna go to the plus and I'm gonna do slide down the content area. And I'm gonna put OTC. This class is not live, so I can do whatever I want. OTC button. Yeah, I'm going to be able to use it, click submit, or some app that I have. And it's always down to the bottom. <clears throat> and by the way, if you ever notice, some people don't know this, but you see that little box there on the side next to the title? That means it's empty. And which means the students are not going to see that link until something is in it. Okay? I've had faculty call me and say, hey, do you see it? Do you have anything in it? Yeah. No, you don't. So. We're going to add a content, and I'd like to use create item, okay? You can't do any um, content editing in the file one. The file is a straight file, okay? So I'm going to go into the good item. <coughs> and then, of course, you get this little guy, and you say, welcome to San Diego. Well, I can't have fun. Okay. Yeah. This is the area. Now, for those of you, when you first start, it may look like that. Okay? Well, when you, if you click on the double arrow, you get a whole heck of a lot more tools. Now, here's the best part. This is the part not a lot of people know about. If you're working in this small little box, how many of you say, forget it, man? I'm going to go blind and I'm looking at that small little area and well, if you click on this square, one that says both sides, you go all the way out, you have the entire screen to work with. Okay? You're still in blackboard because it maximizes your area. <coughs> now you're in here, just like everything else, you've got the tool tip turned on, so you got your first button, you got bold, italic underlying and then you got strike throughs. You got your different kinds of pair of uh, um, typeface. You have your phrase, uh, your fonts. Okay. And then you got your your um, font size. Now let me explain to you about this versus this. When it, when web and this this I learned from Linda Weinman a long time ago for a two change frame waiver. These gives and tag the text behind the scene that makes it easy for the readers and it makes it more universal across the what's called web browsers. Okay. Right now web browsers are our are worst enemies because of the browser wars all the time. But these will help make it more universal across the form. Some people would just leave us on on just whatever is here, a paragraph, and change their font size. Okay? Try not to do that. Try to type in here and use these formats instead. If you want to make it a little bit different, then you can go ahead and do this, but note that you will not always look the same across the form. Okay? It's just the way HTML is. HTML, does anybody know? Anybody not know what HTML is? 
So you're on with HTML. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. And by the way, we've got the auto bullets with number as highlighting tool. Really cool. You got your cut and copy page, all that stuff. I should have that. Welcome to San Diego. <coughs> This workshop is hosted by a Mac guy by Eric and Elaine. She's by Ed McMahon. So basically, what you can do here, I'm trying to find out saying this. If I want to make this bigger, I can go to here like heading. Okay. It may not look so big there, but when it's presented, it looks bigger. Trust me. Okay. And then I can go here, I can do type fonts for colors for fonts. These are by the way called web safe colors. You want to stay the web safe for ABA compliance? Okay. You have highlighting. So you have to highlight, yeah, it's your second word, you have to <clears throat> select what you want and then just apply the tool. There you go. Okay. So then um, you can do auto numbering stuff. Before you leave today. Now, how many of you guys like to do auto numbers and bullet and word? You know how you just sit or do some listing? Okay. <clears throat> In here, you can you can turn it on before you type. But I have found because of the different version of Java. Remember Java is the driver of the, some of this stuff sometimes. It's always best to type what you want first and then apply the list. So let's say uh, complete evals, um, check out a uh, hotel before 11, I found that out, <coughs> we get charged, um, have a farewell lunch, okay, so now what you could do, you highlight those and you can do now, uh, if you notice, there's a bullet list, but there's an arrow, a drop head arrow there. You can choose which one, what kind. The same thing for numbers. Okay? Yeah, the B bot is going to be one, two, three, and then the dent, one, two, three. You got lower alpha, lower Greek, lower Roman, upper Roman. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the uh, bullet. See how that makes it, because sometimes what I've done is I type with the bullet on and I'll add extra space sometimes and you can't, you have to go in to get rid of it. Now to fix it, you can switch, so here's the HTML right here, see that little box is the HTML? You can switch to this, well actually bring up another box, and if you know it, Oh, there he is. That's showing up. This is Internet Explorer. That's why. You, know, you, can, you can go and fix it. And that's why it's always a good idea that you have some basic HTML practice or codes that you know. So if you, I, I really recommend you do take basic HTML classes if you can. Because then it can help. You can go in and fix things you want to. Now, one of the tricks that I love to share is, you know how you add, you like to add a, a nice header? Well, I'm going to add a picture, and I'll make a nice header. So I'm going to show you how to do it so it stays the same way no matter where you go or what you use. And the, 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 the secret is you use tables, okay? Now, there's another way you can do it. I'm going to show you that other way if it's a bit more technical. But the best way to do it is use table, and you click on it, insert at a table, and you're going to get this. I'm going to have two columns, one row. I'm going to put my border to zero. I don't want it showing. The trick is, you see this width? You put that at 100%. Percent. OK? 
to that gives the command to the browser 100% of where the window. So if you expand it, it's going to go. If you restrict it, it's going to grow, uh, reduce. So you put 100% in that area. <coughs> and you don't have to do anything in advance. <coughs> you can use these for other stuff, but I'm not going to go into that right now. My allergies are actually going to pick it up. It looks like uh, insert. And here you'll see it. Oh, you can see here. This, is, this screen is horrible. Here you go. Okay. Now, I'm going to insert a picture. I'm going to go here. See insert image. And I'm going to look for it on my computer. I've downloaded it already. And you can see the size of 3.09 megabyte. That's going to be one big picture. I'm going to show you how you can fix it. So I'm going to click open. What it's doing is uploading to the blackboard into your course right now. And then it's going to show a small little window. It's not going to, we're not done yet. Okay. Image description is what you're going to use for in place of alt tags which you need to do for ADA compliance. That's required. Okay? So I'll put my kid's name on there. Then I'm going to go, can I write those big? I'm going to go to appearance. You want to keep the constraint portion enabled. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's take the biggest size, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 250. And tab, so it does the other size automatically. Don't change that number, whatever you do. Because otherwise, you may have a squashed or a balloon. Okay? Now, for those who don't want to use a table and you want to avoid having that word next to the picture, you're going to add a vertical space. You're going to put like it's a very small number, like six or seven. And if you can play with it, you can keep playing with it, and then it moves the, way, the words away from the picture. But it doesn't always work. The table enforces it. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click insert. So now the picture's been uploaded. I told it where I want it and what size to present it. That's my kid. So now I'm going to click on this side of the table. And then I'm going to say San Diego Conference History. Okay? And then now here, if I want to, I can use the, the, the font size of stuff. So 18, whoops, got to highlight it. 18. I'm going to fold with some font colors. I'm going to blue because she has blue eyes. And if you want, you can change this by clicking. That's the trick if I'm, I'm writing on my setup. It's really challenging because I'm a slant. You can move this over if you want to. It won't impact it too much. Okay, but that's how, that's how I would leave it. And you can put some other stuff in here. This is also a way you can do, <clears throat> if your body, you want to have a couple pictures and then some description on the right side, you can do that, especially teaching art, anthropology. You want to have a list of all those different artwork and you want to describe it. You can do that in a table. You put, you'll have two columns and you can have multiple rows and you can put those in there as well. Yes? What's your thing again? You can, but then your text is not going to move. With your text, your pictures will stay intact, and then the words are going to move down. Then, in that case, I have a question. Um, do you want to repeat the question, Elaine? You got it. In there. Okay. <clears throat> um, you, you, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can, you can do a um, a table with, let's say, three columns and multiple rows. You put a, co a picture in one and a, a caption underneath that. But also, if you notice when I inserted this, 
I like if I want to edit this, I can click the picture, do a right click, and then do image. It'll bring up the property box back. Just so you know that. Oops, I didn't, didn't capture that. Oh, I know why this is the table. But anyway, um, you can when you put an image in there, you can also put and see what the title. You put a caption in that area of computer now show on the page. This is image description. I'll take title as a caption. <coughs> okay. So that's in in. Um, you can also, in the content area, add um, a, a, a document. So let's say it will be helpful to read this document. So you do, you do a hyperlink. You double click what you want to use for the link. And you click on the chain up here or you can use the paper clip. Okay? So if you use paper clip, you're going to get this and you're going to browse the computer. Now, if you, were, if you already have the content on your computer, you can browse the course. If you do like a course copy, you just browse your course and reattach if you want to, whatever it might be. I had one person had me upload everything in her course. And then she was going to do everything on the top of it, and she just used browse course instead. That helps. So, let's put down Winter Coaching Series, click open. And then I got to put an alt tag in there again. Let's see. Now, opening a new window is a, again, is a requirement. You want to have documents open in the window because what happens is be, if you open it inside that frame where everything else is, the reader for the handicap will not jump over to it. It doesn't understand that there's another document coming up. Okay? It's because it's what we call frame technology. It's old. It's been problematic for the readers for the blind. So it's always good. That's why we at our, our, our district, we have a default to yes. When you first use this, it will be on now until your school puts on deposit. Okay? So watch for that if that's the case. <coughs> now I'm going to click Submit. Okay. See now, it's available right here. Okay? Now, let's say I want to save this. And then we can show it to you the student view. So I'm going to go back to now, by the way, I've had people go, how do I get out of here? I can't get back to the property. I don't want to lose it. Well, you got to click that same box again. It takes you right back to the setting window. Okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and see if there's anything else. That's good. Submit. Go to student view. Oh, it's not him. Hold it out one second. I'll make it available temporarily. Yeah, looks. Yes, ma'am. Now, you mentioned with the talent of colors that one can use to say ADA compliant. I looked at that in blue, which would be difficult for somebody who's colorblind. So, people, I'm wondering, is that a particular shade then that somebody who is colorblind already been approved by Blackmore to, to use? You can pull like the title? Yeah, when you mentioned the whole color palette was ADA compliant. So, I'm just trying to. Well, they, 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 what's that? That color palette that I said you saw is an ADA compliant and web safe colors. It's both a combination. 
So that big one that we used to have in service tax 13, they were not compliant with uh, ADA. That's quite a really Right. You might want to go back and fix it. Okay. I would. I was just to go back and fix, just fix it up, tidy it up. I've always come. I've, you know, working with 400 faculty every year on on this stuff. I tell them to go back to the content, go back after the course copy, just to make sure that everything's working. I mean, there's a link checker. Okay, you have a link checker and then to check the link. I'm gonna have you. Have you guys seen the date manager tool? By the way, the new date manager tool. Oh, you haven't seen it. Raise your hand if you're not. Seen it. Okay, I'll show you in a second. Um, but uh, that's what I would do. I've always told my faculty because <clears throat> we are trying to empower our faculty. We find ourselves, you know, this is your baby. You need to go through, and we'll give you the tool. I'll show you how to use it, and then they need to go through it. Um, my boss is my new boss. Is it's not our job to set those contents, and it's not. That's the teacher's job. But we're here to help as much as we can. So let me go into let me go back to teacher view for a second. Let me show you the date management tool before I forget. And I'm going to show you one other thing in here. The date management tool, what I would recommend <coughs> is when you do a course copy, you do a course copy, you bring it over, you update your syllabus. And then if you go to course tools, you can, now it may not appear. We're finding out that it doesn't show up all the time. So you have to turn it on. So I'm going to go to customization, tools availability. You have access to tools availability, but please be very careful what you turn off and on. Okay? Do it only if you know what you're doing because it's a great way to lose your tools and you go, what happened, man? Okay. See how all that connect stuff? Those are all required for us. If you turn off one, the whole connection breaks. It's going to rock you out. And all that kind of stuff. So you want to be really, really careful when you're in here. Date management. Keep that on. And remember, you don't submit. It flies out to Mars. Okay. There's date management. Whoops. Okay. And what it does, you, you, the first thing you do is you get this. You do based on course start date. You determine so adjust by number of days that it's all that you do. I highly recommend it that you do it by the term date from your terms. Okay, course start date. That means it's just going to start from where we want the course to start. Like in our case, it would be September. I don't know. I'm sorry, August 25th. Okay. If you use a term date, it's the date we put into Blackboard already. Because that stuff has to be set up for terms before you can even do a course copy. You can't do it without a term set up. So I'm going to do term dot, and I can tell it which terms I want. So, okay, now I'm not going to touch this class because this one is being worked on. Once you click start, once you click start, what happens is it goes through and goes all to your due dates, your available date, your close date, and now your adaptive release dates. And it will match it as close as possible what you had previous semesters. You still need to go through it. What's nice, it's all one screen. One shot. You don't have to go to all the different tools, assignment tools, the quiz tools, and make all the changes. If you want to change it, you just click on it and you tell plus one day, plus four days, whatever. It's animated. It's so cool. It's so animated. It goes, wah, wah. Success! Okay. And then it's also a calendar. If you want to do the calendar because it doesn't understand what Veterans Day. It doesn't understand where you know you have all these holidays. So you have to go in and make those minor changes. That's your classes to teach on Thursdays. You got to make the changes because that's where all our, our big holidays are on a Thursday, Thursday and Friday. Okay, so that's really cool. That's part of the service pack is 13 
had problems with service pack 14 had made all the fixes. Okay? Good. Any question on that? Again, do that after course copy and ask you about the your syllabus and that way you can do that. Have the syllabus with you when you do it, by the way. <laughs> I hate to tell you guys this, but we're all getting old. We don't remember dates. It's a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. My back is nice. Press up. Now, I want to show you about copying and pasting into some word. Okay. Now, first thing I want to make very clear. It is not going to be 100% perfect. But it's made major improvements with Blackboard. And it's because it's technology. So we go from Word to Web. It doesn't look like the way you want it. Don't be surprised. Because it's just technology. It's not Blackboard. Blackboard said the best it can. But it has come a long way. Let me show you. Let's say, and I'm going to expand this. <coughs> Let's say I want. Oops. All that, okay? And I do a right click, copy, control C. What do you want to do? Well, just remember, go back to Blackboard. And then, now Blackboard is picky. It wants to use a keyboard shortcut. Okay? So control B. Pretty darn good. Look at that format. Okay. It does a really good job. It does. You may have to go through. You have special setup in Word with like maybe maybe the, the bullets and the numbers. You may have to clear that out and do it again. If it's not working for you, there's the chance that that Word has some kind of bogus code behind the stuff. So then what you would need to do then is that this would be the worst case scenario. Okay. This is just I'm telling you this from a uh, can I do training and support and co-administrator at Blackboard, okay? So I was doing all three roles my right hat. So I got a file. You're going to save it as a text, a txt. So you go here and she just save as type. You want to go plain text. Don't use RTF. You want to use text. And what that does is when you click save, you have to change the title because it knows that .txt is different. And what it does, it cleans it out completely. I mean, it completely, I mean, it's just text. The mistake that most people make is that you open it up in Word again. Don't do that. Then put the codes back in. So what you have to do is, let me show you. You know, you, how do you guys remember going back in the old days of computers, you know, Microsoft Windows 3.1, and you had Notepad, okay? Or, yeah, yeah, you guys got the picture, okay? And you guys thought Linda Wyman was just going to bring back some oldies and goodies on the screen. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to go to up uh, our programs, and I'm going to use are you kidding me? There it goes. I got it. Thanks. Okay. Now the notepad. Notepad is a text editor. Just a little history hint for you. The very first web pages were made with this, with notepad. The very first web pages in Netscape and all that stuff that you guys saw back in the way back was done with this program. That's how it started. So it's all text based. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Open. I've got it on the desktop to save us some time. There it is, TXT. 
Oh, come on. Yeah, the same thing. The same thing? Well, anyway, it's going to be called Carrier Farm. It looks awful. But that would be the worst case in this. You can copy and paste that into your content editor and then decorate it through that. Okay. But that would be it's something that's just not working right. And it's one, I, I've taught this at my school, and I've had faculty use that as a second choice after like maybe 15 minutes. They can't stand it anymore, and they just like, forget it. And there's no tech support for it available. You can use this method that saves them a lot of time. Okay? So that's a really cool thing. This is why I like Max. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm biased. Just, I'm an Apple guy. Okay. Any questions on this stuff? Do you know about the, that you can add videos in here? You can do, uh, you can use this one for your own video, but if you use the mashups, you do YouTube. And you can do YouTube, and it goes to YouTube education. So if you want to do, oh sure, now you help me, Windows. Go away. Helen, hello. And then I go here, and then I can see, like if we first I make a choice, I can go to preview. And I can watch it and say, okay, yeah, I like this. So I close this out, and I click select, and then you have your options here. I really recommend you just keep everything as is in there, because then in your content you can put in there, watch this video, here are the things to look for for our discussion, okay? And then we go submit, and this is what it looks like. And then the students, when they get to see it, I've got to go back out of here. I'm going to click submit, and then I want to show you this uh, value message file. Okay. One, two. I'm going to show you this real quick. Okay, so you have your video here, and you click watch video, and then how do we turn it up here? Okay. I was trying to get to my head. Oh, there you go. Thank you. That's not going to be good. This is the real Helen Keller. This is Thomas Edison. Um, Helen Keller and Anne Sullivan. I'm sorry, what? To make it the mess up, the mess up here. Let's say. Go back to edit. You all know how to go back to edit, right? I've had people, they, they, I'm scared. They go, well, how do you get back in there? I'm serious. Go to action tool. Go to edit. Mesh up right there. Just click on that down there, and then you got YouTube video. Um, first, I want to insert a video that I've done in my own YouTube channel. But it only lets you search them once you invent something right there. I'm sorry, say that again. When you do your own YouTube video, you can't search for it. Right. How do you bring in a video right, right. here? You, you, you use this one here. 
through the video right here to insert embed media. Now you want to be careful, okay, whenever you do your videos, check with the Blackboard administrators. Videos take up a lot of space like that, and that will cause to speed up quotas. Every school, depending on whether it's hosted or they start hosting on. The servers have so much space. And if it's hosted by Blackboard, you go over that quota, it gets to be very expensive. We learned that the hard way. Try it. But the three C media that you've been hearing on this conference, it's it's really good. You can upload your videos, you can put it up there, and then they will after it's done, you get a link and then you can you can post it. This this one is one of the people that you work for three C media now, right? No, not, not, not the part. You just, you just stay in the commercial. Okay. Hold, hold on. Let me get to you and then I'll come back to you. Yeah. If you embed video directly from YouTube, they're not embedded. It's linking. Right. So you're not it's, 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 it's it's yeah. Media, yeah. If you embed it, it will go in. This is not embedded. That YouTube video is, 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 is you put the link in there and it's using it and it's going, oh, there's the video, stream it through. Right. Yeah. And when you upload them, you're putting them on our surface space, the Blackboard, and you pay money for that. But then they, now we upload them over to 3C Media, and that way it can be credited. I understand that, but I have got to see the creator's playlist on YouTube, and they are just seeing it. And so they're not embedded in YouTube data. They're linking, they're linking, that's okay, that's still safe. Because it's not uploading Blackboard, it's embedded from YouTube. But still linking to the YouTube, it's still linking to it. So yeah, you can do that. But the thing is not about, if you don't set the YouTube correctly with private, Everybody in the world sees it. 3C Media, the 3C Media is kept locked down. So whatever you want for your content and stuff. But be really careful with the copyright. If you're going to use a, a video from the film, you're under the Teach Act. You've got to still within a 10 minute frame and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to be really careful. Yes, sir. Would you recommend, like I have like some of the text posts that I use, they have videos that go with it, and I've broken them down to uh, chapters to use on 3C Media. So, uh, because that, that, that can act as a caption, also, and it covers the ADA requirements. Yeah. 3C Media has, they have the caption capabilities. Yeah, those are them. Yeah, 3C Media part, the video part is, is relatively new. It's only out, look, October? Yeah. Yeah. And that's when it's a big conference. And um, you really should look into it. It's a really good service. In fact, I'm the same people who take care of the CCT conference, not in lane. They only do CCT conference, that's enough as it is. They have different people doing the 3C Media that are trained in multimedia. And I've been playing with it. I just keep getting sidetracked. I just put on my own server at home. So I'm going to go back to the 3 Media that it reminded me for my videos I do. But you can use Camtasia with it. You can use Captivate. You can use um, PowerPoint and that kind of stuff. I recommend if you're doing PowerPoint, you narrate it with Camtasia because that can export to any kind of type that 3 Media recommends. Okay. Just using Microsoft and narration is, is, is not a good combination and they take up way too much space. Which is, and it's not easy to work with. Whereas you can use WPA, um, MP3, and QuickTime, and Flash on 3C Media. I think it's all four of those. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend. That's just my recommendation. Talk to a 3C Media, see people. Uh, Blaine, this is the uh, head macho. Great guy. I love Blaine. So 
URL. You can just do web link. You can just do this. And that is taking the time. That is taking the space that you can do that, right? Yes. Okay. On the Blackboard Drive. Okay. But it doesn't Right, no, that's not betting it. Because when you, it, what it is, it's just saying, it's saying you got video here. It's got a link command in the HTML code so when the student clicks on it, it takes them to the video. So you can, this, this one will bring the video into Blackboard. You want to have it on another server like YouTube, you use this. If you have, your, we have our own Flash server, so we would use these because the flash file is produced and then it generates a web link and then Joe, my multimedia specialist, will send the faculty the web link for that video and then they put it into the system. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Actually, you no. Then you're going to have you're going to have a little problem. So you're going to have to figure out if the YouTube video is copyrighted, you can't touch it. If it's not copyrighted, then you may want to think about pointing that to 3C Media because they can do the YouTube and caption it for you. The way I understand. Um, but if it's copyrighted, you can't touch it. So when they won't touch it, it's just a violation. You can't touch it. It, 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 YouTube says on the bottom, if it's copyright, it'll say C, NBC, or C, uh, whatever it might be. Most of the copyright stuff on YouTube has been wiped out. Because, yeah, uh, just, uh, people putting up Jay Leno stuff, and, they would, and then, they, then you go, NBC has told us to remove. And so most of the copyright stuff is gone, but be on the watch out. So remember, under the Teach Act, you can use those up to, uh, film. And that's up, up to 10 minutes. Okay, that's what the law states. And the trend, the change, they want to expand it to 20. And most of the, most of the, uh, like, my book has videos, most of the videos, all the chapters, much faster breaking into pieces. Yeah, to break it into pieces, yeah, we recommend that. If it's educational videos, those you can put in Blackboard, no problem, with, with 3C Media. But one chunk them down. You just want to chunk them down. There's also, how many guys have films on demand? Okay, those are wonderful. So those who don't know films on demand, it's relatively new. It is worth every single penny. Unfortunately, I can't access it with him. Films on demand is a library of films from NBC, History Channel, TED, BBC, Ken Burns. Um, uh, I mean, it's, the list is huge. NBC, that's the entire JFK inauguration. It's got FDR's inauguration. It's got stuff about England. It's got health, social sciences, everything. Um, I think it's, it's like $500 a year, something like that. It's not that expensive. And you can take those links and put them into Blackboard. My library and I are trying to work as we can embed. We'll just link it and put another patch in, and then we can be embedded, which is really cool. And what embed means? Basically, you just get a, instead of a link, you'll see the video inside the class, kind of like at YouTube. They just, they just click on it and they play. So that's what we're looking for because the, the films on demand is really good. How many times? How much time have I So how many? Eight. Eight. Well. Yes, ma'am. One challenge that we had this year was one of our faculty, she could just take the film, and it was a little off balance in the sheet. And she had a blind student in the class, so it was providing a narrative. I mean, I could go. You know, and describing that with your, with your, you know, her voice because she had to explain that little clip with her lines that she had to get 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 I don't know, she's lying on the bed or whatever she was doing. Reminds me of Bruce Lee films. It's funny, but Bruce brought up on the whole idea of what we have to do in terms of the mode, what we have to do to survive for that. The, the three, I, again, 3C Media can probably help fix that. They just have to have the original files with that. What you do is, if for something like that, go to 3C Media and there's a request form and you tell them what, what the situation is. And then, then you can either upload it, or if it's too big, 
you can put it onto a DVD and CD and then send it to them. So, um, something like that, they have to kind of dissect it because there's layers. Well, that's why we have what's MP3, MP4, you have different layers and they have to kind of dissect it. It's a little bit of work. I don't know if that's going to be free, it's going to be a charge. It's got to be a charge, that's a lot of work. So, yeah, you need to put it in the Bruce Lee library. Can you email her? Not mask and mask. She's all over the place. No, for them. So this is good for the website. Yeah. So check out the three C media. Okay. It, it's got a lot of information. It's, it's being updated continuously because they've gotten this other stuff coming in, and so you patient with Lane. It's just a lot of work. So, anything? Any other questions about Blackboard? Um, anybody have any questions about the Service Pack 14 features that I can show you? Because 14. That's Blackboard. Is, uh, yeah. The Blackboard Learn is not is nine. Uh, that's the, yeah version version Blackboard nine will be the last version. The next new generation of Blackboard is Blackboard 2015. That'll be in January. I got, I got another question. Really part of this because we have this problem. We have no longer the application. That's exactly something that's hard to do to the Blackboard. And that takes up a lot of space. Even though ours is off campus, I mean, we don't have it on our campus. So we can't this is Blackboard hosted? We're all happy yeah, to do that. They don't have it. And we have them hosted. Yes. It's really so much easier. But the question is then, when faculty are doing the cartridges, then we have to remind them. Every semester, you have permission to have that part of the another semester. So it's been a copyright issue and a lot of problems with that. It takes a lot of things. What do you do? What we do, when, when, basically, I have a lot of really good relationship with the publishers. Um, what I tell the faculty is number one, you're going to use, if you want to use a cartridge, you need to look at it. Huh? It's a publisher pre made course. Um, I would tell the faculty they need to look at it at least one semester ahead. So if they want to do it for fall, forget it. You're, you're too late for now. You have to do it for spring, then, then you got some time. You then you need to let the Blackboard administrators of campus know that you want to look at one so they can set up a shelf. Then you contact the publisher and you give the publisher for the request for the shelf the Blackboard administrator's name, email, and phone. They would then get that email. And that's why you want to email them beforehand because then it doesn't surprise them. Blackboard administrators, trust me, I want do not like surprises. Okay? So you let them know that you want looking at a course shell. So they have to make a shell first before it gets uploaded to the cartridge, or the cartridge uploaded to that. And then, then they have a bunch to look over because not all cartridges are equal. I have seen some that are not very many that are very good. I've seen a lot that are really bad. So be really careful, give yourself time to look at them before. You also want to make sure that Blackboard Learn compatible. Most of them say it's compatible. No, it's not. It's not just Blackboard Learn. It's Blackboard 8. You can't use Blackboard 8 and Blackboard 9. It won't work. It's just a different language. <laughs> we have tried, our golden rules was going to be five years for the faculty. But, we, but we, every time we keep changing the version number, it's, it's like every two years. So um, we back up, our post about Blackboard, they back up overnight, and then every semester we back it up onto an external hard drive overnight at our campus. And it fills up. So at, we, we try to get rid of after every two years, three years, because that list on your course list gets so long. I've got one course assistant at hers. It's about 125 in her list. I'm cleaning it out one by one. So 
we say two years now because it was going to be five years. The three, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And that includes the winter and. and you don't do that. I think our part is this We tell our faculty that we need to handle that information. Well, but remember, uh, that's. I tell them, that one's going on. You need to know the I'm an for two years, and I know that there are We use our courses are made by Banner. Banner system makes all the courses shows. And then uh, we have a program that our senior programmer wrote that has, but it goes over, it just adds our specific information, which is course number, calendar year, campus number. And which for, for you guys would be, what? And I know what class that is. So then our program goes through and adds the name and the semester in the parentheses. So, but we keep it for two year, two, and basically two and a half semesters. That way, then they have to be able to go back to it. But I always tell faculty to drop, download your grade center after you submitted your final grade so you have it, no matter what happens. Because to get the other course back from Blackboard can take as much as four to five business days. Because they have to find it. And now they're, they're starting to talk about charges. Please do not have Blackboard hosted at your campus. It's just too complex. It's just too sophisticated. It's, it's, it's huge. You know, no matter what. Moodle you can probably handle. But Blackboard, Canvas, who have that hosted. You're going to say oh. Which one? <laughs> the only thing that doesn't work in service track 13 very well is the date line. Or the, the, the management. It has some quirks into it. Once you go to Service Pack 14. Service Pack 14, we went to it in just two weeks ago. But I've been using it on a test service for a whole semester, making the training materials and stuff in my school. I thought it was about email, but I thought it was an after rate that was checked. Oh, it's not good, Sam. Yeah, it is. Do you always. <laughs> Always try to, one of you don't let them do a transition in the middle of the semester. Always have them do it in between. We've had schools do it in the middle, and that's, not, that's the worst thing, worst nightmare. Somebody else has a question over here. Yeah. Yeah, I was and, uh, have to tell them what they do. Are there avatars in Washington? No, there's no avatar, but my colleague Jill Golden, I don't remember Jill, but she, yeah, she found a really neat program. Let me show you something. It's free. And we use it heavily for our um, uh, text, text fostering. O S Z right there. O S C E La Photo Roster. And we, we, we click on that. And what it does, it's gonna I think it's, it's gonna take a little while. I don't know if it will, hopefully we'll get done before you guys go. But what it does, it goes back and takes the picture from the camp the photo IDs and pulls them in. And it'll have their names and the picture of it. And it's free. And it's approved by Blackboard. It's approved by Blackboard. Right. If there's no picture there, it's going to be an X. Because, and, and that was the one thing we were talking about. We were talking, you know, students, in fact, we were asking, well, can we require our students to have campus ID? I said, yeah. Campus security can go up to the students and say, do you have an ID? You say, no, you have a driver's license. They can ask you off. Campus ID authorizes you to be on the premises. So. Mm -hmm. It's a both approved blackboard um, block, it's a building block. No. No. They had roster, 
they don't have a photo roster. They're, pro- they're probably using a different kind of program in the background. Oh, the profile. You're talking about the profile. Yeah. Thumbs up. Okay. Yes, that's in a profile. We don't use that. Okay. So that's in a, yes, in a way you can do that.